Um, there's about a dozen or so straightforward steps um, that don't require specialist tools and no particular expertise to do that can um, improve the sound and playability of virtually any guitar and um, it's the kind of thing that's often left to professionals but none of it is rocket science so you know um, I'm not an expert so take this with a pinch of salt um, but in about half an hour or so I'll, <coughs> I'll have this thing uh, playing and sounding better So, this is the patient, um, it's the Vino caster, um, caster because I modelled it on a Stratocaster, it actually took the, the body template from tracing around it a Stratocaster, and Vino because the body is made from uh, lathes, the pieces of a, an old ancient uh, wine barrel and it's my main guitar and made it about 15 years ago and it still plays really well except I picked it up a couple of weeks ago and the strings were like cheese wire and it's just virtually unplayable so I've ordered some fresh strings and I thought um, as I've not touched it like this for I don't know six months a year I thought I might as well give it a quick setup and so here we go um, <coughs> First thing, while the old strings are still on it, I'm going to check the truss rod. Um, it's probably the scariest part of the whole operation, but if you're careful, there's nothing much to it. Um, truss rod is steel rod that runs uh, at the back of the neck, and you tighten it, loosen it. There are various setups on the Stratocaster style things. There's a hole at the top here might vary for each. Tightening it will pull the net back. Now eyeballing this, I just had a look, and it's got a very slight concavity. It's bending forward a wee bit. So that does need tightening a little bit. Um, I mean it's pretty obvious just eyeballing it. Uh, an alternative is to pop a capo on and hold the string down up here and see how much, how much play there is. There's loads of play on there, it's quite concave. But I'm only going to take a tiny, tiny bit. As with all the other steps in this, um, just do the, the minimum, because you can always do more later. And an eighth or a quarter of a turn at a time. Mm. It's going out of focus a bit there. Uh, My eyes gone very out of focus after you cap on this a little bit. Oh. All right, that's better, that's more like it. Just with a quarter turn. It's now the, the E strings buzzing in the middle when I. Hmm. Top E isn't, but low E, so that's probably about right. And that was just with a quarter of a turn. Okay, next, um, I'll whiz the strings off. Um, back in a minute. For a preliminary clean up, I'm going to use some fairly basic tools. Um, a couple of Cocktail sticks, toothpicks, first. Along the neck, <coughs> by the frets, quite often gets gunged up with bits of skin. So I'm just going to run the toothpick along there to scrape off. Because they're wooden, it won't harm the wood. And it only takes a second or two. Um, I have never been trained in this, but Many years ago, I went to the London College of Furniture. Um, I was studying electronics for the music industry, 
on another floor there were guitar builders and restorers and that kind of thing and uh, I got friendly with one of the guys there and he talked me through all the setup and lots of things like that and it was surprisingly straightforward nearly done Okay, I'll do. Next, I've got some <coughs> warm soapy water. Uh, very, very slight, little tiny bit of washing up liquid. And to squeeze out that, and I'm going to have some. There's Claudio. I'm going to have some kitchen roll at the ready to dry it immediately afterwards because I don't want any water to soak in. It's quite hot today, so it's should dry almost immediately anyway. But uh, you need the water because um, salt from your fingers gets into it. You want to get rid of that. Okay, so quickly and dry it again. Again with the pickups, I don't want any water getting into them, but I do want to use water to clean them. So a quick wipe and then immediately dry. And the bridge. Hmm. Slight bit of corrosion there showing that it's probably from salt. Yeah, the salt from your fingers is corrosive, so it'll Corrode things. Uh, okay. This is quite a handy little tip. You can get these locking strap connectors, which I used to always be knocking off the strap and dropping the guitar on the ground. So this one's been saved a few dings thanks to that. The design of this one, um, big mistake I made. The Stratocaster is such a brilliant piece of design. Um, very little about it. Dis I dislike the tremolo arm on the Stratocaster, but apart from that, I've got a fixed bridge on this. Um, I made the full mistake of doing my own scratch platey thing. I should have just stuck to the Stratocaster's design. And that, as you can see, has been a bit messed up. Um, but apart from that, you know, the basic design is fine. Wipe, 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 wipe. I'll pull this again and, and I'm going to just put a bit of polish on the body. It's just wax polish. That's only been treated with linseed oil in the past and a little bit of wax polish afterwards. Um, I'll pause again there. Ha, fool Danny. I started waxing the body and then remembered I'd missed a step. This is isopropanol, isopropolico, alkyl isopropolico, isopropanol alkyl anyway. Um, just general purpose cleaning stuff for contacts and things. If you need, if your electronics are playing up a bit, this is the stuff for it. Now, I know what the finish of this guitar is, it's wax, so this will strip away the, the wax. Um, so you should be aware that the finish of your guitar, I would imagine that most um, painted guitar bodies will be safe with this, but don't be careful. 
And I'm just going to give this a, a squirt around all the moving parts, the screws and so on, just to shift any little bits of crap that might have accumulated. And it'll like muck and grease build that will be shifted by that. And again, I'll put some lazy machine heads here. A little bit of here. These are quite sealed, so it's not really that. So that's just to remove any old oily grime. Yeah, it's taken the taken the wax off quite nicely there. <laughs> well clean it. Okay now to wax. Okay, after a funny little interruption, his, uh, Marinella delivered some a, a couple of COVID tests and I've tested negative, so woohoo to this. So um, next thing to do, um, I've done the truss rod, so this should be approximately straight. Now I think um, I know these frets are reasonably flat because I've been over them several times. But if you've got, if you buy a, a cheap, like I got a, a Squire Strat in there, and um, there was a bit of unevenness in the frets. And for that, you can eyeball it, but it's easy with a straight edge. You check it against it, and then if there's anything really out of line. Finest diamond stone you can get. I've glued this one onto a block of wood just to make it easy to handle. And very gently, take, really take your time because it's so easy to take too much off. Um, sorry, lots of masking tape first. Mask everything off first. And then until it's nice and smooth. Then clean it up a little bit with. Um, you can get. A uh, proper crowning file that are shaped like it for the tops of the frets. Um, but I found just like a that's a fairly flat diamond file, very fine, and a triangular needle file with with the masking tape on again, going over them just to give them the finest bit of crowning, just to shape them. But I repeat, do that really gently, very very carefully. Because if you go too far, you've gone too far and you'll need a whole new set of frets. Um, but I do want to just polish the frets while I'm here. So, rather than, I could just mask and tape it off, but uh, I got, I've got loads of little accessories that I very rarely use. But the handy one was this, that's for covering the, covering over the frets so you can sand them. And for that purpose, I've got, um, I think, uh, 400 grit. Finest sandpaper you fancy. <laughs> this is 400 grit, which I think is probably about right. I do want to, there is a couple of places where I can see little nicks. And I do want to try and smooth those over a bit. So I do want some... Normally to polish I just use uh, wire, very fine wire wool. I wouldn't recommend using any chemical metal cleaners on them because of like corrosion. Pronto. Pronto. So I'm just going over the ones that have got little notches in with the sandpaper and then I'll just do the other ones with the 
plywood. Okay, that one's a bit ugly. A little bit there. Eh? Not strange where I put the wire. I mean, I'd imagine it. Right up there, kind of strange. I don't really play much lead stuff, so it's quite surprising. So, quick go with the wire wool. Dispensable tool for this kind of thing is an old toothbrush, which I'm going to use just to get rid of any of those filings and go over the machine head a bit. Some loose crap in there. It's not the, not the machine head, it's the bridge. Machine heads will be okay, I think. And so now, ah, yes. This stuff, Olio Bianco di Vaselina, it's um, neutral mineral oil. It's actually used for going on top of uh, demijohns, demijani of, of wine, so it stops the air getting to the wine. So it's food safe and everything, it's just very neutral mineral oil. Um, I've used things like uh, sunflower oil in the past, but this, I think it's about as neutral and unreactive as you can get. And I think it's fair enough to use this for lubrication as well. It's at least as good as lubricating oil because it won't have any of the other additives. I mean, it's not going to be getting hot or anything, so. And this, I'm going to liberally slap on the fretboard. Liberally slap on and wipe off. Want a thin coating. Um, now, here's a tip from my own mate Keith. Don't chuck away your old hypodermics, use them for oiling. Yes, mate. So on all moving parts, teeny weeny little drop. Another good thing about this neutral oil is that it won't stain the wood or anything like that. Just a very gentle, inert kind of oil. Ends over here. And 
I'm going to make these heads what I can get at. That on, I did good. Cheers, Keith. These machine heads I've got are a locking kind, a Schler, something like that, and although they are an improvement over regular ones, um, the thread's gone on a couple of them. Oh, after 15 years, the thread's gone a bit on a couple of them. So the actual screw, the locking part, is just uh, aluminium, which is a bit of a poor design, but there you go. Cast something anyway. So it's come unlocked. This one in particular, the thread's a bit, gone a bit on it. The idea is very good. Oh, screw there. Dear me. Oh, yeah, did I mention check all the screws? Okay, okay, okay. Right. Um, I'll put a bit of oil on the neck at this point as well. Check the rhythm I was using. Now, stringing up. Um, I do have a little tip for that. I can find the strings which is when you get them out of the packet cloth with a bit of your neutral oil on it with the string through to put ends it doesn't really make any difference on the base strings but on the toppy um, it protects it a bit and quite stops that salt corrosion thing going on and you know you get longer lasting strings so why not I'll pause this now and I'll put the strings on So I've now got the strings on, but only quite loosely. It's far from being in tune. There's just enough tension to hold them in position. The reason being is that there's an adjustments on there to make first. <coughs> While it's still quite loose. If there's anything wildly wrong, it's better to do it when they're quite loose. Um, the, the bridge height, the action there, well, the bridge height controlling the action, um, it's tight enough that any big pro major problem will show up now. And so I just want to go through with that pocket pick. And just to make sure there's no buzzers. Just very roughly, if there's any extreme buzzers. So it's roughly about right. Let's check it from the side, the action. Um, you see a lot of like Fender will have official factory setup measurements for things. Um, I generally like the action quite low. Um, I'm more bothered about having it kind of even and regular. Uh, that isn't far off actually, just eyeballing it. I think I can probably take the top 
that can't be able to take them all down just a fraction I may have to backtrack but uh, where are we Alan key um, well I'll move the camera down to show the bridge first Okay, hopefully that's reasonably clear. Um, this particular kind, I believe, is known as a hardtail bridge. Um, unlike the standard strap ones, it doesn't go through the body. The, these strings project out the end to here. Uh, the adjustments on it are similar to most others. Um, this does have a, an extra one, the most an extra adjustment, which is the side to side on the rollers here and I just want to make sure these are over the pole pieces on the pickups just lining that up there so it's vertically over the pole pieces on the pickup the other two don't really care but this one yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah, a little tiny bit that way Yep, and yep. Um, obviously, the sanity check that it's okay on the neck to know from past experience that if it's okay there, it's okay here. And then uh, the other key bits for which I will need these. Um, huh. First, it's locked with that. I need to undo that a little bit. Which way is it there? Loose. So now to put it in, it just jams them in. Um, yes, lower, lower them just a fraction. I can find the right Allen key. Nope. No, I don't see these are metric. The other ones. Hmm. So that might be metric. So after a lot of hunting I came back to these ones and it turns out this 0.05 uh, inch one is actually the right for these, it's just it needed a bit of a shove to take it down a bit further. So I'm just going to give that a very slight bit of lowering, that as loose as it can go. Same with it. One, just about half a turn or so, I think. Well, about half a turn, I think. Just by sight, I can see they're reasonably well lined up. Hopefully not. Probably take that down a bit more. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Um, so, now the one I'm going to come back to in a minute um, is the critical one, that, quite a critical one, that's often overlooked. 
not exactly critical but it does make a lot of difference to the sound and that's on the intonation it's actually adjusting the length of the the string up from the bridge moving the bridge in that direction to adjust the length of the overall length of the string um, which I'll come back to once I've I'll get it uh, more or less in tune in a second. Tuning, just before I start, um, if you can see what I like to do in the middle uh, is just pre-tension them a little bit, give them a little tug, not too much to break them, just so that they've got a little bit it helps. Doing that at the 12 frets best, but you get the idea, just give it a little bit of a stretch before trying to tune it and um, back in a second. So I've uh, tightened the strings up, got it pretty much in tune and plugged into the amp. So, but I've not finished yet. Um, one thing I should mention before going any further is that sometimes you can have problems with the nut up here. Um, if it, those are too deep or too shallow, um, you can fill them with super glue and baking soda to fill them up and then you file them down, or if you need to file them down from scratch, using nut files that are graded thickness and uh, just a little like hexal blades really, but of different thicknesses there to match the thicknesses you want on the, on the nuts. But for that, I'd certainly, it's probably something you never need to do. Um, have a Google for it, if in doubt. Um, so the intonation, I suppose. Uh, no, no, wait. Pickup height. Oh, my pickup's in a decent position. This should be. Um, I think maybe. Yeah, that. Actually, two of these could do with a little bit of lift. Um, have I got a screwdriver? That's right for that. Ooh, ooh, a bit gummed up. Gummed up with wax. <laughs> so much for polishing. Uh, bigger screwdriver. Going to lift these up a fraction. Take the bridge a bit quite away because it's not going to interfere, it just needs to be reasonably balanced sound wise. <laughs> I'll assume that's about right. Switch between the pickups. a lot quieter. Ooh, these are gummed up. That's had a bit too much wax on it over the years. So I'll take him up a fraction. Really do the biggest screwdriver for these, but still.
Now, the un unusual combination of products I've got on this. This one is known as a Lumitone, I believe, something like that anyway. And it's quite a strange setup. I bent it a bit. Louder than the others. There. Okay, I'll call that done for the height. Uh, I'm not in any danger of running into the strings there. And so, um, intonation. So, the intonation is about the length of the string related to the spacing of the frets. And the pretty simple idea is to get it so that if I can find a screwdriver, flat head, flat head, flat head. So that, so the idea is to get it so that that fret there corresponds to an octave above that. Now you could do it by ear if that sounds an octave above that. Well, doing it by ear is the easiest. Um, but rather than doing it on the octave, you can do it on the harmonic. That's very close. The, uh, the fret. I'm getting more variation when I press hard on the fret than I am than it, than it is naturally. That's near enough. so close it's to my ear it's not too bad it'll do that does sound like it's going higher when I'm fretting it um, oh, I've got a tuner here, so why not use it? Got one on my phone, but I find this a bit more convenient. Oh, when I'm doing the intonation, I'm not actually worrying about the absolute tuning. If the pitch is up or down a bit, it doesn't really matter. It's that relationship between the harmonic and the fretted note that's key. If I'm using the tuner, I might as well use the tuner. Okay, there's my G. Oops. <laughs> it's gone a little bit flat already. New strings. It is, it's a little bit sharp. Um, so, if it's a little bit sharp when I'm fretting it than it is on the harmonic, I need to make the string longer, the open string longer, which I do by loosening this one a bit, lengthen the active length of string, just a fraction.
there. Oops, tying it to go that way. Which will send the tuning out. Actually, I don't. That one's a very different position. So. Curious. They are quite wonky, the shape of these, but I don't know, I suppose it's within within about three millimetres, so yeah, and uh, um, final tuning, hang on if I missed anything off my list, cleaned, yes, check the screws, strings and the oil, truss rod, um, bridge height, clean the threads, oiled, pick up height, intonation, um, the big jobs, you've got the stoning and crowning of the frets. Pickups, yeah, if you... Um, I made this guitar because I wanted a guitar like this guitar, and I strongly recommend doing that. Um, but another good option is buying something, like in there I've got a Squire Strat, and um, I did these things like stoning and crowning the frets, did set up. And the only significant change I made was buy some uh, cheap pickups for it. Um, pickups are very expensive. Um, well, actually, I spent a lot on the pickups for that one. But the idea is that you buy cheap pickups, and they're actually a lot better than the stock ones you get on things like Squires. So you pay a uh, hundred hundred dollars or whatever for a spark, Squire Strat. Squire Strat say $50 for some slightly better pickups and you get a guitar um, that's not far off being a full-blown Stratocaster especially if you do all the rest of the setup uh, machine heads, I've seen some really really crappy ones on cheap guitars, the Squire ones are acceptable actually um, but you might consider replacing the machine heads, tuning heads because I mean if you're slipping out of tune just replace them uh, nut, failing the nut, or even replacing the nut. It's not a big deal, you've just got to take a lot of time, it's a patience thing. Um, the electronics, I notice that's a, my switch is a bit crackly, I might just give that another little squirt. Contact cleaner. That should help, and the same goes for the pot as well. You can get proper pot cleaners. But the, the switches and things and the potentiometer, the volume controls and tone controls, they're really cheap and it's a, it's a fairly simple soldering job to f swap them out. But usually like, there's no difference in quality between a cheap guitar and an expensive one as far as a, the, the, that part of electronics is concerned. The pickup's big difference. And I think that's about it. So. Um, I'll get it in tune and make sure it sounds all right. Okay, so tuned up, plugged in, and uh. <laughs> 